symptoms could mean something more. That gritty feeling can't be brushed away. Even a little blurry vision can distort things, and something serious may be behind those itchy eyes. Up to 50% of people with Graves could develop a different condition called thyroid eye disease, which should be treated by a different doctor. See an expert. Find a TED eye specialist at isitted.com. Tomorrow on ET, our slam dunk interviews with the star-studded cast of Winning Time. It's like the craziest story. <laughs> Dishing behind the scenes hoop scoop for season two. That is what I'm talking about. Make sure you check that out. And here's one more thing before we go. Take care, y'all. Good night. Happening now. Shocking allegations of abuse at the border. Reports emerging of DPS troopers mistreating migrants who are seeking refuge in the U.S. Up next, we take a closer look at the disturbing claims that have ignited public outrage. More heat on the way, but we are tamping down the triple digits a little bit, along with a glimmer of hope for a shot at rain. We'll tell you when in just a bit. With Saharan dust expected to move in next week and other pollutants in the air, what you can do to breathe easy. The News at 5 starts right now. Right now at five, alleged cruelty at the border. Governor Greg Abbott's decision to deploy buoys in the Rio Grande now further fueling the conversation regarding migrants' conditions. There are reports claiming that the governor is ordering inhumane actions against migrants and asylum seekers, prompting one outspoken state lawmaker to send a letter to the Department of Justice demanding an investigation. Our Jonathan Cotto spoke with a migrant advocacy group who's calling on Congress to investigate the state's Operation Lone Star. That's right. A report by Hearst Media Company indicates Texas Department of Public Safety troopers were ordered in some circumstances to push children and babies into the Rio Grande. It's drawing reactions and raising serious questions about the treatment of vulnerable individuals seeking asylum right here in the U.S. But the Department of Public Safety representatives say no such order was ever given. Now, La Unión del Pueblo Entero, an immigration activist group calling on Congress to investigate the state's Operation Lone Star. I can tell you for a fact that just, just seeing some of those comments and some of the headlines is outrageous. It really just really discredits the work that our troopers have been doing for the past two years. The Department of Public Safety's Lieutenant Christopher Olivares reacting to recent claims that DPS troopers were ordered to push children and babies back into the Rio Grande. Our troopers have not in any way have, you know, forcefully pushed any migrant, let alone a child, back into the river and have not denied any type of migrant or anyone uh, water, especially those that need it. Um, in fact, it's been quite the opposite. Olivares says they have over 1,400 personnel dedicated to the border and says troopers have the right to express their opinions. A lot of these troopers are not from the area. They're not from the border. So when they experience, you know, 100 plus migrants coming across with children, what's a shock factor? Especially they're asking for water and you don't know what to do. And you're not, you, don't, you really don't have a clear understanding of the background or, or how they got there or how they crossed the river or what resources are provided to them. So, of course, they're going to have an opinion about what we're doing. Immigration activist organization La Unión del Pueblo Entero says this is an example of how deterrent policies and efforts like the one in place at the border right now don't work. And they don't work because these are folks who have crossed oceans, have crossed rivers, have crossed deserts, you know, jungles to get here. Merrero, he says there is no safer alternative to protect the lives of migrants than by offering them a safe an efficient way to seek asylum. And I think right now we're just seeing a small piece of the puzzle of everything that is going on behind the scenes of Operation Lone Star. And just moments ago, we're hearing from Governor Greg Abbott and how he's responding to the allegations. He says, quote, no orders or directions have been given under Operation Lone Star that would compromise the lives of those attempting to cross the border illegally. The Texas Department of Public Safety and Texas Military Department continue taking steps to monitor migrants in distress, provide appropriate medical attention when needed, and encourage them to use one of the 29 international bridges along the Texas-Mexico border where they can safely, legally cross, unquote. And of course, we'll be keeping an eye on everything that is happening at the border. You can follow us on KSAT.com for the latest. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Of course, we'll continue to follow that story. Thank you, Jonathan. A man sitting in a truck shot in the head this morning on Jamar Boulevard near South General McMullen 
and Highway 90. San Antonio officers say they found the victim when they arrived at the Kennedy Arms apartment about 8 a.m. They say the victim was still alive. They tell us the victim was shot multiple times, taken to the hospital in critical condition. Officers say right now they don't have a suspect description. They say they are working to find witnesses. Police are asking anyone who may have seen anything in this area around the time of that shooting to call SAPD. Another shooting on the city's southwest side claiming a car, but only wounding the victim. The victim in this incident shot just before midnight on New Laredo Highway, not too far from Quintana Road and Pearsall Park. According to police, the victim was taken. Uh, he was on the park on the side of the road with his hazard lights on, and that's when the suspect pulled up. Officers say the suspect shot the victim and then took off, and then a second suspect at the scene also took off in the victim's car. People nearby saw the victim bleeding and they called for help. Almost two hours before that shooting, fire had people at an apartment complex running for safety. The crews rushing to the Iron Horse Valley Apartments on Loop 410 close to Starcrest Drive at about 1030 last night. Eight apartment units had to be evacuated, displacing 14 people. We're told everyone got out safely, including one elderly woman who was helped out of her apartment on a stretcher. It's not clear how much of that damage that the flames caused. The firefighters also investigating this fire that almost destroyed part of a home in the 1500 block of Alhambra. That's near I-10 and El Monte Boulevard. We're told no one was home at the time. Two dogs were inside and they were rescued. Firefighters say a downed power line spotted near the back of the house, but it's unclear if that's exactly what sparked the fire. In news around America, a 10 year old boy in critical condition after he was thrown off a carnival ride. It happened this weekend at the Taste of Summer Festival in Antioch in Chicago. A fellow rider says the boy's safety harness came loose. He was airlifted to a nearby hospital after the accident. A family member says the child broke his ribs, femur, arm, jaw and cracked his skull. Officials say the ride passed an inspection earlier this year. It is not clear if the problem was a mechanical one or operator error. The Illinois Department of Labor, which is responsible for the safety of carnival rides in the state, has launched an investigation. In Alabama, the city of Florence cleaning up an extensive diesel spill in the hope of averting an environmental disaster. The diesel is leaking from a tugboat which sank in the Tennessee River, releasing between three and 5,000 gallons of diesel into the river. Beaches and waterfronts are closed since that fuel began washing up on the beaches. We still have no reason for the sinking of the tugboat. Officials with the FAA now investigating after an emergency evacuation slide aboard a United Airlines Boeing 767 came off during mid-flight. It ended up in a Chicago neighborhood. A neighbor who saw the slide said it was bigger than a car. The Federal Aviation Administration says maintenance workers at Chicago's O'Hare Airport realized the slide was missing after that plane landed following a flight from Switzerland. In a statement to CNN, United Airlines said they immediately contacted the FAA and they're working with them to find out exactly how this could happen. Capitol Hill divided over a letter that former President Donald Trump says he got telling him he's the focus of a grand jury probe into the January 6th riot. Trump reportedly confirming on social media today that he received what's called a target letter from the federal special counsel's office. That letter sent from counsel Jack Smith's office. It's a so-called target letter typically sent to individuals who could soon face criminal indictment. In addition to January 6th, the special investigation is also said to be looking into allegations that Trump and others tried to overturn the 2020 election results. Lawmakers though, with mixed opinions about the letter. We expect that uh, the target letter and the work that the grand jury uh, continues to do will uh, meet that threshold of, uh, of seeking the, the facts and uh, holding people accountable. This is the only way that the Democrats have to beat President Trump is to arrest him, smear him, charge him with ridiculous charges. Now, the special counsel reportedly also sent Trump a target letter before he was indicted earlier last month on those 37 criminal counts for his alleged mishandling of classified documents. Trump pleaded not guilty to all those charges and denies any wrongdoing. Research, excuse me, go ahead. One federal agency now touting that 
our paychecks are finally pulling ahead of inflation. The Labor Department says back in June, hourly wages were adjusted for inflation. Paychecks rose just over 1%. That's compared to a year ago. But this news is a glass half full. Uh, it's the second straight month of gains after two years of rising inflation, which basically wiped out any pay increases. Now we're going to talk about that research that established that hearing loss is one of the biggest risk factors for developing dementia. And a new study has found that intervening with hearing aids could actually help. It found hearing aids reduced cognitive decline for those at higher risk of dementia by nearly half. The study didn't necessarily answer the question why hearing decline could increase dementia risk, but scientists believe it could be caused by the brain working harder to redistribute power to actually understand what it's hearing. If you find yourself trying so hard, trying so hard to squeeze in your workouts on the weekend, you're not alone. A new study might have found it just as beneficial if you're a weekend warrior as it is to exercise throughout the week. The journal JAMA looked into more than 100,000 people who used health monitors to track their movements throughout the week. Researchers found that both daily and weekend exercises show similar levels of health benefits. No matter what days you get your workouts in, doctors recommend that adults get at least 150 minutes of physical activity a week. One simple thing too is just walk, walk a little bit more. That helps a lot too. Just move around 104, the high temperature today. That's so far our high. We could still gain a degree or so over the next hour, but we've tied the record already in San Antonio with the possibility of exceeding it. We'll have that full update coming up at 6 p.m. 109, the high in Catula, Del Rio 108, New Braunfels 104. 103 the high temperature in Kerrville today. We are all feeling the triple digit heat. It continues. Shirts at 105. 107 in Michael's backyard in Floresville. 105 in Dean's backyard in Myco. 104 right now in Helen's backyard in Seguin. We're all feeling the heat. We'll be back to talk about how we're going to trim back these temperatures just a little bit with a pattern shift and what that means for a little glimmer of hope for rain coming right up. A little glimmer of hope. It's about all we got right now. Thank you, Adam. All right, let's check out traffic right now. I-10 and Frio. This is usually a slowdown as you head towards downtown. It is both on the upper and lower decks as you head towards downtown on I-10. Still ahead, breathing easier. Some easy steps you want to take to reduce breathing in those irritants and allergens this summer. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom, and here's a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Life in prison for a man accused in a deadly drive-by shooting that killed a four-year-old child. But the man on trial was not charged with murder. We explain why and what comes next in this case. Plus, a first-of-its-kind breakdown of Alzheimer's cases by county, where Bear County falls on that list and how that number will affect local resources. And also ahead today at 6 o'clock, a case that explains pop quiz. Can you tell me what this is? What is that a shape of? Is it a state or are we looking at a county? It's a county. Yeah, see. So how well do you know South Texas geography? Turns out our geography has something to do with the kind of weather we get here. It's all in a case that explains and it's all ahead today on the News at 6. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. How polluted is the air we breathe? There's traffic, there's Saharan dust blowing in, and as people in northern states know, and we even know here, smoke from wildfires can be a problem especially if you're someone who has allergies and asthma. 12 Your Size, Marilyn Moritz now with how to track your air quality and breathe a bit easier. Thick orange haze from the Canadian wildfires continues to bother folks up north. It was the scariest looking um, sky I've ever seen in my life. It's uncomfortable and can be harmful. Microscopic particles in the smoke are linked to asthma, 
coughing, difficulty breathing, and even non-fatal heart attacks. Here, to a much lesser extent, we deal with summertime Saharan dust. It can bring in pretty sunsets, but can also be irritating to sensitive respiratory systems. To stay on top of air quality, you can sign up for alerts from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality or the KSAT Weather app. You can also get current and forecasted air quality from the EPA's Air Now website and app. It's showing moderate Tuesday. Other apps, IQ Air, Plume Labs, and Purple Air monitor it too. When pollution levels are high, it's best to stay inside and keep outdoor air out of your home. Weather stripping helps. And consider an air purifier. Look for an air purifier with a HEPA filter to get smoke out of your home. A carbon filter will help it get the smell of smoke out too. Consumer Reports tested air purifiers by injecting smoke particles into a sealed room. Top in those smoke tests, the Allen Breathe Smart 75i Pure and the Blue Air Blue Pure 211 Max. I would definitely get an air purifier. And remember these, if you do have to go outside when the air quality is bothersome, wearing an N95 face mask can help you breathe easier. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And out there, not too much haze. Looks no. pretty clear. Yeah, not a lot of haze. We don't have just your typical summertime haze is what we have. But I do think that's going to change with the Saharan dust in the days ahead. We can anticipate to notice much more haze. Let's get right to it. Looking at the current location of that Saharan dust or technically Saharan air layer. That's just clipping parts of deep south Texas. We really don't have much in place. The highest concentration is out over the Gulf of Mexico and even eastward into the Atlantic. That's where it's really dense in the Atlantic. Notice we're going forward in time. This is Thursday, 4 p.m. Starts to move into Florida, affecting Cuba as well. And then through the weekend, it spirals its way into the Gulf of Mexico. And by this time next week, it gets a little bit thicker overhead and more noticeable. Uh, probably the most noticeable Saharan dust we've had yet this summer is going to come around Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. It could even last for a few days as well because of the way the winds will be flowing. But notice we'll have light to moderate amounts offshore. It's going to be fairly dense amounts of that African dust. Again, that's next week. So if you do have, if you're very sensitive respiratory system, just keep an eye on next week where you may notice some, uh, some issues with that dust. Otherwise, notice the main storm track coming down the central part of the country. And that's partly because that's the steering flow, even through Utah, Colorado, and then down through Missouri into St. Louis. Upper level high, it's over New Mexico. Around the edges of the high, the periphery of it, you can still get some of that shower and thunderstorm action. Well, this high, the heat high, it's going to be splitting and elongating across the whole southern U.S. later on this week by Thursday, Friday. Thereafter, it starts to build in the western U.S. again. This is significant, not just for their heat and their temperature situation, also poking up into Canada as well. They're going to get a taste of the heat, but it's not centered overhead. And with the clockwise flow around that high, We've got that northerly flow aloft, so the door is open. I mean, we're not swinging it wide open for disturbances, but we're cracking that door open, putting our toe in it and hoping for a disturbance or two. And there could be a little bit of rain making energy to move our way. We don't expect much, but even the models now are picking up on the fact that we'll have a little extra cloud cover in the sky and there is a slight chance of a few pop up showers or brief thunderstorms. Nothing severe starting this weekend. Don't get your hopes too high, though. It's only a 10 to 20% chance. Saturday, 10%, Sunday, 20%, Monday, 10%. We'll be modifying that, of course, in the days ahead as the time nears, either increasing or decreasing those chances. But it's a little glimmer of hope of a slight change in something a little different out there. 103, our current reading. Feels like it's 105 when you factor in the dew point of 63 and that humidity that's in the air. But the humidity's dropped quite a bit this afternoon, just like yesterday. 102 in Hondo, Banderas 105, Kerrville 102 along with Bulverde, Converse and Stinson measuring 104. Del Rio, by the way, the high of 108, that was a record today. Right now, Del Rio 107. This evening is going to be just like the past several temperatures, slowly falling through the 90s and 80s. Bit of a southeasterly breeze. And then tomorrow morning, we start the day at 78 at 7 a.m. By noon, we're up to 93. 
total sunshine and into the afternoon we get back up to 104 for the high temperature, which tomorrow is not record breaking. It's actually two degrees shy of the record. We're not anticipating a record day tomorrow. So far we've tied it. There's a chance we could break it for today. We'll update you at six, but tomorrow's going to be more of the same in the low 100s. 105 Castroville and New Braunfels, Bull Verde about 101. Friday, we're going to make a run at the record 102, but notice how we trim back just a few degrees 101 by Sunday and Monday. So I mean a degree here and there. You're not going to notice much of a change. It's that psychological boost. Uh, still triple digits. Thank you, Adam, though. All right, the Spurs <laughs> make a decision. This guy gets a pretty nice wedding gift. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Trey Jones entering his fourth season with the Spurs, coming off a career season. How the Spurs reward him with a brand new contract, resigning Trey Jones. And Jeff, Jeff Trailer says he will do whatever it takes to keep his guys from entering the portal and leaving. Coming up. Uh, as far as how we've kept them all, you know, we did lose one this year, uh, but we kept seven that tried to, that people tried to get. We kept them. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer is doing his best to not let his players leave for other schools via the transfer portal in big board sports. The Spurs today formally announced they're re-signing a guard, Trey Jones, drafted 41st overall in the 2020 NBA draft. Trey is entering his fourth season with the silver and black. Terms of the contract were not announced, but it's a reported two-year deal worth a total of $20 million. In 68 total games, 65 starts last season. He averaged career highs at 12.9 points, 6.6 .6 assists, and 3.6 rebounds in 29.2 minutes per game. He took over as the Spurs' starting point guard after the Spurs traded DeJounte Murray to Atlanta. And check out this fun picture of the Spurs tweeted today with the caption schools out for summer Julian Champigny, Sandro Mamokelashvili and Charles Bassey at Discovery Point hanging with some dolphins. The guys having some fun and chilling out in some cold water to beat the heat. UTSA Roadrunners head football coach Jeff Trailer is spending some time in Houston at the 91st annual Texas High School Coaches Association convention and yesterday he met with the media there and he talked for 20 minutes about several topics including the transfer portal. When it comes to his guys entering the portal, he's not messing around and he will fight to keep them. Yeah, I'm not going to just roll over and, and let them just have my kids. I'm going to call them on the phone, say, hey, Sam, my kid came in here and screenshot and you hit him up. He's on my roster right now. What are you doing, Sam? And usually Sam's going to say back, your kid came and told you. And I'm like, yeah, I've got the screenshot, Sam, right here. And that squashed seven of the eight. You know, the one, he did what he had to do. And I'm still close to that one, too. I, I love the kid. I think he'll hit me back in six months and say, you know what, I miss you, Coach. I might have made a bad decision. I hope not. But we'll see. But the one that got away is wide receiver Zachary Franklin, who transferred to Ole Miss. He's the Roadrunner's all-time leading receiver and one of the best in the nation. And Coach Trailer kept saying the word Sam. That's the name of the reporter who asked him the question about yeah. how do you keep the guy. So Just he an said example. Sam. Exactly. Like Larry. Yes. Or Steve. Ursula. <laughs> Weather guy. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.